Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son. You are to name him Jesus, because he will be the person who saves his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, the name which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago, there was a commentator on the radio that I would listen to at 12 o'clock every day, or 12.05, I think it was, and then at 7 at night. His name was Paul Harvey. He had a, a, a succinct way of giving a new spin on whatever the news was of the day. It's plenty of seats. Come over here. Come on. And if they're babies, bring them up front, because this is their holiday. <laughs> And so Paul Harvey would, would end his little piece with a phrase, and now you know the rest of the story. And if I had the energy, I would give it to you in his little uh, accent. Now you know the rest of the story. That was it, I just gave it. So today, you know the rest of the story. Let's go back. Because the story we read about Joseph, see, he doesn't feature too much in the Gospels. But today, he's a star. Now you're going to know the rest of the story. You know the background. The angel Gabriel came to Mary. You're going to be the son of a mother of son of God. Mary says, "How can this be?" And don't worry, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the child will be born, will be the savior of the world. Okay, but at that point, she wasn't married. She was betrothed to Joseph. They had to go through this period, like an engagement, before he probably built his house and got his finances together before he could actually marry her. So they weren't living together, but she was his, he was hers, betrothed. But that got messed up. It got messed up because now she's pregnant. What do you do with a pregnant woman? Well, in the time of Joseph, if you're married to her, if, she's, if you betrothed to her and she's pregnant, somebody else, you can condemn her, you can divorce her, you can have her go before the Sanhedrin or one of the public figures and have a stone to death. That's not too foreign from Semitic culture today in some places. But we come back to today and to the rest of the story. So Joseph has a dream, and the angel of God, the Angelos, the messenger of God, says, Whoa, don't be afraid to take this woman into your home because by the Holy Spirit that she's carrying this child. And you're going to name him something that means what he is, Joshua. Joshua or Jesus. And that means he who saves his people. Where did that begin? It goes back hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born. And the prophet Isaiah, great prophet of the Old Testament, so much that we know about Jesus was applied to the scriptures based on the inspiration from Isaiah. Things about today, like announcing his birth, the, the crucifixion scenes, the sorrowful scenes of his life, the, the suffering servant that we read on Good Friday. 
all come from Isaiah. Not one man, but a series of books and authors attributed to the school of Isaiah. So the book of Isaiah covers 300 years, but it's not the same author. So we're in early part of Isaiah. And don't forget, the people of Israel were a political entity. Besides a religious entity, they were a political entity. Much of what we're fighting today in some parts of the world. A theocratic lifestyle is very dangerous. It means the priests have all the power. You don't want your priests to have all the power. Physical, uh, political, and then the other way, today. So they're living in a theocratic system. And Isaiah is telling Ahaz, the king, don't mix politics and religion with the other people, the enemies who are going to attack you. Listen to God alone. Don't join forces with the Greeks. Don't join forces with the Assyrians or any other group. No ecumenism those days. No ecumenical thought at all. Ahaz plays his bets, and he says, you know what? Thanks, Isaiah, but no thanks. Because I'm going to make bargains and covenants with these other former enemies so I can win the battle. Bad move. And that, at that point, Isaiah goes to Ahaz and says, you really screwed up, Ahaz. And, and why don't you ask God for a sign that I'm correct? And Ahaz, in his false, narcissistic humility, said, oh, you heard it right here. I am not going to weary my God, and I'm not going to tempt God. And Isaiah had enough of that, and he says, Okay, you, you not only weary the people of God, now you're wearying God by saying you're not going to tempt God. God is in charge. And I'm bringing God's message to you. And if you're interpreting that as my own message, you're wrong. It's God's message. Don't mingle with the other groups that are going to defile the temple. As a matter of fact, he went that far, Ahaz, to set up pagan, temp pagan altars in the temple which was like complete sacrilege. So Ahaz is really screwing himself. Isaiah is pointing it to him how bad he's doing. And what does Isaiah say? I'll give you a sign. And don't forget, these are the days of kings having more than one wife. So he had a harem. Okay? And there was one wife, potential, in the group, in the palace, unmarried, single, young girl, we call it an Alma. When that was translated from the Aramaic into the Greek, it was called virgin. Young, unmarried girl. And Isaiah points to her and says, okay, I'll give you a sign. See this Alma? She's going to be pregnant with a child, and you're going to name him God with us, Emmanuel. That doesn't happen. Ahaz dies, his son Hezekiah is the next one on the throne, and he's worse than Ahaz in the slow decline of Israel. But that phrase, when Matthew went back into the Old Testament, just like you and I are doing today, looking at Isaiah, when Matthew went back, he don't forget, he had no guideline, he had no theology, theological guidelines as to what he was going to write about, but he wanted to write about Jesus the man, and that's why very often in, in our uh, icon iconography, Matthew is pictured as a man with wings. It's a symbol of his, his gospel because it focuses on the humanity of Jesus. And the phrase that got him, Matthew, is God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. What a name. What a role. Life goes on. And then we pick up Matthew during Joseph's dream. And we just heard that read. Joseph is dreaming, and God is speaking to him through a messenger. Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary. She's going to be the mother of the Savior. And Joseph's head is rambling, I'm sure. Don't forget, Joseph is also a member of the ancient house of David, the ancestry of David. 
the Messiah had to be born into the house of David. Because the scriptures all said that. Whenever the Messiah comes, he will be born into the house of David. Lo and behold, Joseph, where does he go to register Christmas Eve? He goes to Bethlehem because that was the city of David. He goes back to his ancestry home. It all comes together. And Matthew's putting this together saying, wait a minute, this goes back hundreds of years. And we didn't know it at the time, but Isaiah was predicting the birth of God with us, Emmanuel. And now you know the rest of the story. That Joseph says yes to the angel, says yes to Mary. And now we're going to begin that little voyage, and then we'll continue that voyage on Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock. That was a, just a reminder what time Mass is on Christmas Eve. We'll, we'll continue that story on Christmas Eve, and you'll hear, we will hear once again, the birth of the Messiah. But before we go there, who cares who the Messiah is? You're not Jews. I'm not a Jew. Who cares who the Messiah is? We have Paul telling us in a letter to the Romans just what we are worshiping and why we're doing what we're doing. Paul identifies himself. I'm a slave of God. I'm doing what I'm doing on behalf of God, and I have no choice. Slaves were an institution at that point. So the people who heard that, you're a slave of God. You're making yourself a slave, which means taking orders and doing whatever God wants you to do. Yes, because I am here to tell you about the gospel of Jesus descended from the house of David. That Jesus descended from the house of David is God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Son of David, ancestor of David, son of Joseph and Mary, and son of God. See, Paul brings it together. Now, Paul's, Paul's gospel, his readings, it come well after the birth of Jesus, well after the death of Jesus. But he's putting it all together. This is, the, this is our heritage. This is your grandmother sitting down on the couch next to the fireplace telling you about how she experienced the United States and saw the Statue of Liberty and how she came over on a boat or, or, or a cattle truck and, and all her stories. And she's sitting there telling you how we got here, how you got here from Africa or Italy or Portugal or anywhere around the world. That's what this is all about. That's what Paul is doing. He's telling us our story. And our story as Christians starts with Jesus Christ. Who is he? He came after the resurrection of the dead and after his holy resurrection. He gives us grace. He brings us to faith. And he calls all of us to one family, to be holy, just like his father is holy. See how, how significant Christmas is in Advent? To find out who we are. Why do we come here? Whether with this Catholic church or another Catholic church, why do we worship? Because we are connected to the family of God through Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Mary, son of Joseph. And now you know the rest of the story.